came early, but he's up and going to try it again. Well, it may have been a uh, quick uh, cramp that they were able to rub out of his leg. You can see the protective glasses that he wears. In third quarter statistics, uh, you can see he is setting close on first downs. Uh, Northern Iowa with that advantage, but the yards passing, you can see, favors Northern Iowa. But yards rust, of course, with uh, Southwest Missouri State. Well, you see almost 700 yards of offense through three periods, so uh, it's been a heck of a night running up and down the field. Well, what's amazing, too, is the possession of the ball, both at 22 minutes. Now Laker with it. First and 10 at the 44, back to pass. He throws it over the middle. It's Cummings, who's got some running room. He tries the far side of the field and is taken down at the 30. So he thought maybe it'd be better to go to the wide side of the field, but was taken down there by Farley. You don't suppose that uh, Leaker and the Bears are going to take a little out of the playbook from you and I, that across the middle stuff was working very well in our ball game for the Panthers, and now a couple of times back to back, uh, the Bears have picked up some sizable yardage with it. Well, what's great about college football on a replay, it's uh, the strategy is always changing. Now, Leaker will see something that might work. Leaker one time to Cummings across the middle in the pickup of about five. Second down, six at the 24. Here's Williams now trying the right side and is dumped on his head as he got to about the 27-yard line. Williams always exciting whether he's gaining a yard or 100 yards. From the ground level, watch Keith Williams. He's the man in motion this time. And this is the key, I think, or, or the aspect of a fine running back. Not afraid to go down in any way. See? Little acrobatics. Well, Williams, as we mentioned before, Gained nine yards per carry last year. And has been having a great year here at 85. Third and five, ball in the 28. Here's Laker with it now, handing off up the middle. And maybe a yard or two, but that's all. So it's to Susan time one more time. It'll be fourth down. What will Southwest Missouri State University do? Well, we're not at the point where you think about three points. That's obvious. Uh, you go for it. You cannot make any other decision because uh, if you go for the three and even get the three, you still left yourself two more scoring position uh, opportunities behind. So you got to go for the fourth down here, even though there's 12 and a half minutes to play. The crowd you saw in your picture, pushing the club on, fourth and three. Laker drops back to pass, now runs to his left, throws it down the middle. He's got 12, but they just missed him. He threw it over his head, and he was being guarded there very closely by Joe Fuller. So B.J. Torbett couldn't reel it in as he got to the goal line. It'll be turned over back to Northern Iowa with a 14-point advantage here in the fourth quarter with 12.37 remaining for Briggs Stadium. But Joe Fuller, I don't know how you and I goes about awarding game balls or, <laughs> or whatever, but if he isn't acknowledged sometime next week up in Cedar Falls for his work in this one, I'll be surprised. He's been all over the field. I know he's playing a little bit hurt right now because I saw him limping around, but he's just done a marvelous job tonight for the Panthers. He's been a big cog in the wheel the last uh, two years. Great sprinter as well as football player. Now a quick handoff at the middle. Here's Floyd with running room. He streaks off to his left. Up to the 45, he runs out of bounds. And he picks up almost 20 yards on the carry. They mark it out at the 47th, so it's a 21-yard pickup for the youngster out of Chicago, Carl Boyd. I don't know if we'll see this all the way through the end. He might be on a track team. Watch him hurdle this bench right here. Rolls out. Patton forces him out of bounds. I don't know if he'll go over the bench or not. Nope. Believe me, he did it. <laughs> what I think drives the defensive unit crazy for Southwest Missouri State is that Boyd's so small, but yet the offensive line is so large, so they're looking through holes, trying to find him coming through. He's not going to be over top of the men. He'll be underneath them. And by the time you see him, it's too late. And he pushes his way up pretty Ball close forward. to the midfield stray. On a first and ten. Dave Alpo on the stop. Now, I would think right now Daryl Mudra is thinking, let's find a way to burn about six minutes off that clock. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking, Tom. He's got to be plays with this drive, taking their time, up by 14. He's trying to put the crowd to sleep, too. Keep things simple and basic. This team is a passing team, but they're keeping it on the ground. Man in motion is Smith on a quick handoff, gives it off for Peebles. And he gained absolutely nothing as it was a bad handoff. He got caught and was tackled for no gain. Kenny Braden made the stop from the linebacker spot. So even though the Panthers probably would rather not do it, they're now placing themselves in a passing position at midfield where if they can keep this drive going, and like I say, if you can burn even three minutes, 
and get this thing down to about eight minutes to go, you might have a little more breathing room. Third and seven now for the Panthers. With 11.23 remaining here in the final quarter, you can see the total yards. And Smith now getting set. Two men split to the right. Scott Owen way off to the far sideline. Drops back to pass. Smith now at the 40. Being huddled in by three players. Gets the ball off and almost threw it away. I want to tell you, Smith took a hit in the back from David Alpo that hurt all the way up here. He saw the defenders in front. Watch Smith as he rolls out and looks ahead, and he can see the defensive people in front of him. But wait and see who it is that hits him to the back. May not have been Alpo, may have been Simon. Yes, it was Simon took him down from the back, and that hurts. And Houston almost picked it away. Needless to back to kick. Last time, 4.3 on the hang time. He's going to try to send it down to Hartwig at about the five. Gets the kick off. Way back as Hartwig starts to wave for it, but the ball bounces slowly into the end zone. It'll be first down and 10 for Southwest Missouri State as they try to get back into this ball game. From Briggs Stadium, you're watching Coast to Coast, SPN College Football 85. Here's to Bob Healy. Yeah, Steve, we had talked about the importance of this game at the top of the show. When I talked to Joe Mudra before the ball game. He said he knows it's early, but this could be the deciding factor in the Gateway Conference, the game this year. And right now with the Panthers holding on to the lead here with about 11 minutes left, it could put them in the driver's seat. Uh, no doubt about it. Also, uh, we talked about them getting up after that big win over Kansas State, and I say that question has been answered today. See? Well, you're absolutely right. You come home with, if you can hold on to this one, with a 3-0 and record. And 1-0 and in the conference, you got to be happy with that. Well, 2-1, and one, but yet uh, on the road, a very good season so far. Undefeated in the conference. Back to pass now. Leaker looking down the middle. He throws it way out for Trulov, and he couldn't hit him as he tried to reach up for the ball at the 45. Steve, last week, that same play right there went 70 yards for six points against Illinois State, and I believe that was what they were hoping for there. Trulov spends most of the ball game as a blocker in there tight, mixing it up. And I think occasionally your defense kind of falls to sleep on him. And that's when Rich Johanningmeyer and staff like to bring him out when people have forgotten that he is a receiver. Second and 10, ball on the 20 yard line. Southwest Missouri State trailing by a 14. It was 21-14 for Northern Iowa at the half. They could now over the middle. Has it picked off on a deflection from Williams. And was it Farley who got the ball? If it was, it was his second interception of the night. Well, Joe Fuller's coming up, but no, it's Farley. Farley has the interception. One more time, Leaker, he's got him right in his face when he throws this. Comes up and off the fingertips, and there's Farley. Pulls it in, and you and I, with about 10.48 to go, can grind one on in here, and I think seven here, Steve, would just about close the door. Well, Farley, as we talked about earlier, named Conference Player of the Week last week for his tackle prowess. Tonight he's intercepting passes he has, too. Northern Iowa, first and 10 at the 25-yard line of Southwest Missouri, trying to go up the middle. And again, the tough yardage has been hard to come by. It's worked for Boyd once tonight. Yeah, he scampered in for a 20-yard touchdown. They were going the other direction the last time, and he probably had to have visions of doing it one more time, springing off that mob in the middle. Didn't work for him that time. Well, we've had two field goals and a 20-yard run by Northern Iowa here in the second half after the Panthers had a 21-14 lead. Second down eight, the ball in the 23. Two receivers split wide to the right, now a quick handoff to the left. And boy, it has been the real workhorse tonight. Gets it down very close to the 20-yard line, so he really didn't gain anything. Braden, again, on the stop for the Bears. Boyd, uh, I'd say there are three or four guys that are really have really been carrying the load tonight for you and I. Boyd, and Frankie, and Fuller, and probably Storbeck. Two guys each side of the line have really, really done commendable jobs and played, played awfully well tonight. Well, Boyd has two touchdowns tonight for Northern Iowa. Frankie has one. Peebles has one. And Mike Angel had a field goal. Now Smith with it. Third down, five. Back to pass as the man open for it as he cuts in toward the goal. He gets down to about the four-yard line before he's finally pushed out of bounds. So if you can't uh, run it up to the side, you'll throw it to him. That's the philosophy 
Here uh, in the second half, giving it to Boyd so off. One more time on the roll. Smith just floats out to Boyd. And this is one of these where the player himself, he really earns most of, and all of the yardage himself. Sheds him off at the 10, takes him on down inside the five. And I think the Panthers are about to put a lock on this game. Great camera angle, by the way, on that play. First down, goal to goal, the ball sitting at the four yard line. Mike Smith trying to get his troops ahead by more than 14. On a quick handoff, they give it to Boyd again. He goes up the middle, runs into a pile of bare players. Maybe got a yard and a yard and a half. We'll have to wait and see. Well, Jerry Wetzel, our producer, and uh, Don uh, Galich tonight, our director, have been giving us great shots, different angles tonight here at Briggs Stadium. Fans still hanging in there, 8.57 remaining. And Southwest Missouri is going to have to come up with a monumental play here to keep Northern Iowa out of the end zone. Here's Boyd again, up the middle, he scores! So Boyd puts in his third touchdown of the night, and he's extended the advantage to 20 points here as Northern Iowa is looking to win their second game of the season with 8.47 remaining. Here we go once again, ground level, nice level to see this. Watch the offensive line blow back the defensive wall and Boyd just shoots on over. And as you say, gets his third TD of the night, a 20 point bulge now for you and I trying to go to 21. Mike Angel now hoping to make it. Five in a row, the kick is down, it's up. And it's good, so Angel has given Northern Iowa a 21 point lead, 38-17 here from Briggs Stadium. From Maine to California, you're watching College Football 85 here on SPN Sports. The score 38-14, we'll see if Southwest Missouri State can come back. Very dangerous now on your pass plays, and of course Northern Iowa is gonna try to put the blitz on, but also move back their secondary and look for nothing over top. That's gonna be the big play. They're not gonna be wanting to have a big play offensively by the Bears. Yeah, I think that's the key. And, and knowing Rich Johanningmeyer as I do, I'm gonna be surprised if he tries to come and get it all back. Well, we're getting set to go on a kickoff. Carl Boyd with three touchdowns tonight. Two of two yards and one of 20 yards. And he has done uh, an excellent job. As we mentioned, he had over 100 yards against Kansas State last week. And he was not very uh, quick to gain the yards in the first half. He had 41, but he's really made up for it here in the second half. But we'll see what the Bears decide to do on offense. The natural thing would be to start throwing it, but when you know you're really out of the ball game. Here comes Reinhardt Smith. The youngster out of Florida carrying the ball over the 25, and that's where Southwest Missouri State will start at about the 26-yard line. McGarland McCleary on the stop that time. Reynard Smith been a very busy man. One thing I want to point out, through all of the kickoffs tonight that uh, you and I have sent to the Bears, they have successfully kicked it away from Keith Williams every time. And of course, Williams came into this ball game with a very, very high return average. So credit to the specialty teams for the Panthers there. Williams very dangerous, as we mentioned, when he gets out in the open. And you saw it on a pass play in the first quarter. Now Leaker on first and 10. Goes back, looks to his right, throws it down the middle. And he's got Torbett all alone, and he couldn't hit him. He threw it just over the top of his hands as he was racing down, trying to beat Fuller at about the 25-yard line. Laker had the arm, but he threw it just a little bit too far, and Torbett couldn't pull it in. Well, he started playing football here at Southwest Missouri State back in 1909. The first game was against Springfield High. They beat them 29 to nothing. They've come a long way since. A lot of football games played since that time. Ball in the 27th, second down and 10. Laker again will have to pass. He's got to get this club back into the game. Gets it over the middle. And it's taken there by Wade. He moved the ball up very close to the 30-yard line. And he picks up a few yards. There's a very, very happy Carl Boyd. He has had a great night on the ground. A couple of plunges for two yards each on touchdowns. We had a great 20-yard scamper in the third quarter. And they're down seven, the ball on the 30-yard line. Well, that's fine. Now Laker with it. 
They've got to pick up a first down here with 7.59 remaining. Laker throwing it, an incomplete as he tried to hit Mike Trulove, and Trulove couldn't quite hang on as he was being corralled as he tried to bring the ball in at about the 35. Well, the Bears will give the ball away here, and I'm sure Daryl Mudra is sending the word down, if it's not already known, that uh, with about just under eight minutes to play, the Panthers are going to do everything they can to run that clock down, get back on those buses, and go back to Cedar Falls because they have really earned themselves quite a victory here tonight. Well, what was a 12-hour 12 12 bus trip on the way down on Friday? It's going to be maybe 12 hours back, but it'll be a lot shorter for these guys coming away with a win. If they can hang on. Now the ball comes back over, and it's taken down by Scott as he moves the ball over to the right side. As Owens tries to move it up to about the 40, he gets it to about the 41-yard line. We're going to take a break here from Briggs Stadium, and Northern Iowa has a 38-7 lead over the Southwest Missouri State Bears. We'll be back right after this. Time out. Headed here in the fourth quarter of play, Northern Iowa with the ball and a 21-point lead, looking to go 1-0 in a gateway conference. And they are 4-1 in their series since 1980 against Southwest Missouri State, looking to make it 5-1. There's a gentleman who is eating popcorn, not really uh, enjoying the score of the game, but having fun uh, with some of the concessions here tonight. That was Mr. Gary Beck and his wife, uh, by the way, Polly, who was next to him. And on a quick handoff, maybe a yard gain. By the way, they're from Cottonwood, California. He played football here at Southwest Missouri State in 1918 to 1919. 30, uh, a long, long time ago. He's 85 years old. He's the oldest, one of the oldest lettermen here in Springfield. So you were calling games back then, weren't you? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it, and I'll tell you, he's got a lot of friends watching tonight. A party going on in Cottonwood, California. We say hello to everybody out there. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight. Well, Willard now on the 42-yard line, second down to nine. He's come back into the game on a handoff to Earl Peebles, and he fights himself up to about the 48-yard line, getting very close to the midfield stretch. Well, the order has come down from on high <laughs> for the Panthers to run this thing right up the gut, use up the clock, try to pick up a first down or two if you can, and let's take the win and go home. And I know that's desperately what they're trying to do here. They'll have a third down play to try to keep it going here. You know, you take a look at uh, people like that in the crowd. They come back after maybe being gone a long time. And the Alumni Association, no matter whether you graduate or not from a college, you'll always have part of that with you. And it's great to see people like that in the stands. And a quick handoff. They try to go up the middle. Maybe gain about three yards. But it'll be fourth down. And Southwest Missouri, who is begging for the ball and trailing by 21 points with 6.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter, will get a chance to get it back one more time. Hunter Clay Nidasol comes in. The 6'2", 215 junior out of Ames, Iowa, has had great hang time tonight. He has sent the ball skyward about even with the lights most of the time tonight, even with pressure. Fourth and three, gets the punt away. What a kick. Sends it back to Hartwig, and he calls for a fair catch and puts the knee down at about the 18-yard line where Southwest Missouri State University will take over. Well, here again, we're under the under the six-minute mark, and, and SMS is, has to be totally aware that it would take uh, just the greatest of miracles to pull this ball game out. So I guess you're fighting for respectability at this point, but at the same time, you don't want to start throwing interceptions that result in unnecessary uh, points on the board. True, you may find yourself on the losing end of the score, but you want to keep trying to get positive things out of the game, even with five minutes to go, because you'll have the players thinking about that Monday morning at practice. Back to pass now. Leaker with it, strolls to the left, throws it upfield, completes it to Torba. And he is far enough for the first down as he moved the ball outside the 30-yard line. So Torbett pulls the ball in for about a 12-yard gain and a first and 10, and he steps out of bounds with 5.36 remaining, and that's what they had to do. As you can see, Leaker throwing the ball. Watch Torbett come up now, and he pulls it away from the receiver and quickly steps out of bounds. Ball on the 32, first and 10. Bears have been able to get a field goal here in the second half, and that's all. As the penalty flag goes down, the ball's loose. Double. And they stopped the play right there as 
double motion again that time. Two back starting the same time. So uh, you and I came very close to picking it off and not even having to worry about it. So the procedure call, back wheel in motion. And that, and that. Let's go downstairs and talk to Bob. Got Mike Smith, uh, starting quarterback tonight for the Panthers. Mike, uh, did you expect it to be? Uh, all right, go ahead and say hi, everybody in Cedar. Park. Hi, Mom, Denise. Did you expect it to be uh, this much of a, a runaway as it is right now? No, I didn't expect it. Uh, they're probably the toughest team we faced so far. Uh, they're not as big as we are, but they're they're a very quick team and uh, they're good on defense. And that is saying something, considering you played, beat a big team from the Big Eight uh, the last ball game. Now there was some concern that you guys weren't going to be able to get up. It looked like you came out with the guns uh, blazing. Oh, definitely getting up. I don't think it was a problem. Uh, K State was a big win for us. Uh, I think we're still riding high on that a little bit. All right, uh, good ball game. We'll go back upstairs. Mike Smith, the All Stater out of Florida. Second down and ten. Ball in the 32-yard line. We had a chance to watch him warm up yesterday, and he can really rifle the ball. Here's Laker, can also throw. Now has some running room. He's up to the 40. Try to hang on. He gets 15 yards and picks up the first down. So Laker smartly headed toward the sidelines, but I don't think he made it. Well, I'm not sure whether he made it or not, but we got a flag down, and I'm almost certain we'll have a clip on the trail that time. One of the uh, blocking back, or one of the blockers following Laker got a little uh, excited <laughs> and took somebody down. Watch Laker again. He's on the roll out, looks, sees the opening left, and just fires out, and he's off to the races. And let's see if we can pick up the clip on the trail here. It might even be number 73 coming into your screen. I'm not sure. Yep. There it is. That'll do it every time. Well, right. when your quarterback is going down, now's the time not to uh, throw the clip when he's picked up enough for the first down. And you can see the happy Northern Iowa Panther bench off on the near side of the field, sitting back, relaxing. Now they got a 12-hour bus ride, but as we mentioned, sure going to be short with a big victory coming under their belts here tonight. Brad Selenrick, the man guilty of the clip all conference last year more than likely will wind up that again this year 6'6 6'5 265 offensive tackle a lot of pros looking at him but we all clip occasionally <laughs> 10 of 11 of the players on the offensive team back from last year thank you Laker now on the 28 yard line second and 15 goes back to pass looks throws it over on the near sidelines and a great diving catch pulled in there by Tony Lopez, the junior out of Chicago, Illinois, and he slides out of bounds. A lot of folks have been very, very impressed with Tony Lopez. Last year as a freshman and what he's been doing in limited action this year, he's playing behind B.J. Corbett, and of course that makes his playing time somewhat sparse. But when he's in, he does a fine job. Leaker will float a nice one out here. Here you pick him up on isolation. And Lopez, I really think, is going to haul this down by the fingertips. Let's see. So it sure looked like that time. I'll, you can see him as he reaches up for it. Yep, fingertip catch. You betcha. Back live, and they throw this one, I think, to, uh, to Trula. Trula picks up uh, four yards. It'll be second down and six. Ball sitting at about the 47-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. 4.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter from Springfield, Missouri. We hope you're enjoying all the SPN sports action here. 85 college football. And tonight it's been a real barn burner between Northern Iowa and Southwest Missouri State University. Back to pass now. Leaker drops straight back, throws it over the middle. And he hits Witt coming out of the backfield. And he picks up maybe five. And that should be enough for the first down. A lot of people have really done a lot of things tonight for both of these ball clubs. Witt has come back from being down a couple of times with a little nagging hits and bruises. Here he comes out of the backfield. Makes the catch, then is stopped by Storbeck, who's just been everywhere, I swear, this evening. Well, there you see the score as Southwest Missouri State has been able to pick up a field goal here. In the second half, but Northern Iowa has picked up uh, two, a field goal and two touchdowns, and they try a long pass, and Williams pulls it in for a touchdown. Williams on a 41-yard pass, and there's a penalty flag down on the field. That may bring it back. And the yep. fans are excited, but it's going to be displeasure shown here now as Northern Iowa gets their players up with their fists in the air. They know it was a penalty against the Bears, and they'll bring the ball back. Watch this. Leaker does a nice job of leading, and, of course, speed is what got Williams out there. Nice catch, but I believe they're going to call a hold back of the line of scrimmage. And, and for Keith Williams, it's really kind of an unfortunate situation. He's been a player all night long, just aching to bust one or two, and it just didn't work out for him that time. 
Keith Williams has pulled in a 57 yard pass in the first quarter to tie the game up at seven apiece. And he thought maybe he had another one there, but it's going to be a holding call, as Tom mentioned, against the Bears. So we'll bring the ball back. It'll be on the 49 yard line. And it'll be a long, long way to go here. As Leaker will have to try to pull a rabbit out of his hat one more time. 344 remaining in the game from Springfield, Missouri. Laker now throws it up. It's wet. And the ball is knocked down as he tried to catch it, and they're going to call it incomplete. A wet turn had the ball. And I guess probably the most horrifying thing to see in football is to turn and see another face mask not more than eight or nine inches from you. Watch this as Leaker throws to Witt. Witt catches, turns, and bang. There it is. Well, I think Rich Johanningmeyer, the coach for the Bears, is going to really be scratching his head at the end of the game because both quarterbacks have been able to move the ball, but not really for the whole game. No, not at all. And uh, again, you don't get down on one particular aspect of the, of the game, but the SMS defense has just not been there on the key plays tonight when they need to be, but they're young. They've still got a lot of growing to do. All in the 49, second and 20. They go back to pass again, looks way downfield. Throws it toward Trulo, but it's intercepted. And here comes the Northern Iowa Panthers back as they move it up to the 50-yard line. It's finally knocked out of bounds after Dave McCorvey. The freshman out of Minneapolis brought the ball down to about the 47-yard line. Going to have a flag, too. I think we'll get a late hit out of bounds against the Bears here. Frustration hit, I like to call it. Watch Leaker again. Throws down. McCorvey is going to be the man making the interception. True of the intended receiver, and he gets turned around. Turns at the last second. You get the pickoff play here. And here comes McCorvey, a freshman out of Minneapolis. Went to uh, North High School in Minneapolis. He's playing behind Tim Moses, number one, who's a senior out of Waterloo. Don't know if we'll see where the penalty flag comes in or not, but he was headed to the sidelines and was gone and took the hit right there, and I guess they felt like it was beyond the point. Well, maybe they're, maybe they're going the other way. We may be talking clip. Well, they're talking to the captain for Southwest Missouri State, and uh, Dave uh, Alpo has made the decision, uh, told the referee that we're gonna take the ball back, so we'll wait for the call. Well, should have been, a, apparently was a clip. Apparently was a clip, and so, but it will come after the interception, so, It'll be you and I ball, and we'll try to see if they can run out three minutes and 25 seconds. So Northern Iowa gets what they wanted, possession of the football, and a 21-point lead with 3.25 remaining here in the game. And coming down the field, Kevin Willard will continue quarterbacking here for the Panthers. Well, the now Panthers they, have... Now they say late, now they, excuse me, they say late hit on the Bears now. I'm a little confused. Well, now they're coming back again. Two penalties, I guess, will be the way it'll work that way. After the after the uh, interception, I would have thought maybe you would have offsetting, but apparently not. They elected to mark it off against the Bears, and the Panthers will have it at the 36. So Don Thomas, the referee, seems to have gotten everything squared away. It'll be first down of 10 for Northern Iowa at the 35-yard line. Northern Iowa, who comes into the game tonight in the Gateway Conference, picking up their first win, and they are undefeated as it's now taken by the freshman. And Harold Peebles moves the ball up to about the 45-yard line. So the Bears who came into the conference standing with a 1-0-1 mark will go 1-1-1. Unless they can uh, come up with a couple of miracles here to get back into the game with just three minutes remaining trailing by 21. I think that's a little too much to ask. Here you see Peebles on the run. And boy, he is so big. I mean, when he runs, he draws a crowd of tacklers, and that happened again that time. Well, you take a look at the uh, size of the rest of the people in the backfield, and he is a big runner. He's 221. That's yeah. Scott, Scott Gardner, a new man. He's out of Salina, Kansas. And it's very close to a first down. Ball sitting right at the 45-yard line. So the coaching here for Northern Iowa getting a chance to play some of their reserves as time is waiting here. We hope you've enjoyed all the action tonight here on SPN from Springfield, Missouri and the beautiful campus of Southwest Missouri State University. Quick handoff one more time to Gardner. And he fights his way for the first down and moves it up to midfield. 
I tell you, that first down probably means you and I is going to be able to maintain possession through the end of this. Big, big first down, and the Bears defensive unit's got to be tired, has to be tired, and would be more than happy to see, would be happy just to see him, would be very happy to see him just uh, run that ball out. Under two minutes to play now. First and ten, ball at the 50-yard line. Chula Vista, native Kevin Willard, handing the ball off to the right side, and they pick up about five yards. And let's go downstairs and talk to Bob. See, we got one of these uh, defensive players now. All the offensive players get all the glory. Um, Mark Farley here, uh, last year, uh, last week, uh, player of the week in the Continental Conference. A couple interceptions tonight. I said one early. He said no, two. You guys are playing a good ball game on D as well. Defense is doing really good, and the offense is keeping us out the field. They're moving the ball on the ground, and they're just offense having a big game, too. Now, how does this team stack up to the other two you've played so far? This team is a tough team. We thought this was, this was probably the best team coming in here because they got such a great offense. They had so many returners. But our defense just come together real well out there, and we got them. Two interceptions, not one, two, right? Got two, two yeah, got right. two. <laughs> All right, let's go upstairs. Well, Farley, who was uh, named the Gateway Conference Player of the Week last week, has had another oh, excellent yeah, game tonight. Uh, we'll give, you a couple, give you a couple of finals here, folks, in the Midwest. Might like to know about Texas beat Missouri 21-17, and Arkansas shut out Tulsa tonight 24 to nothing. Also, uh, McNeese State and Nichols State down in the down in the south area. Played tonight. Nickel State won that one 37 to 35. 52 seconds remaining. A quick handoff up the middle. A couple of yards for Northern Iowa. And SPN would like to thank the following people for helping bring this game to you. The president of Northern Iowa is Constantine Curris. And the athletic director is Bob Bullsby. The head coach is Daryl Mudra. Sports information director is Nancy Justice. The president of Southwest Missouri is Marshall Gordon. The athletic director is Bill Rowe. And the head football coach is Rich Johanningmeyer. And the sports information director, Mark Stewart. I'd like to thank them all for their great help tonight and putting this game together. 16 seconds and counting down. A 21-point victory here. If Southwest Missouri State can keep Northern Iowa off the board. The fans starting to file out of the building here. And it'll be Northern Iowa going 1-0 in the Gateway Conference and Southwest Missouri State falling to 1-1-1 after three games this season. We're going to be back to recap the game here from Briggs Stadium from Maine to California. You're watching College Football 85 here on SPN Sports. With you from Briggs Stadium and probably the happiest man tonight is Daryl Moodra, the coach of Northern Iowa, as he came in here tonight knowing this was going to be his third road game of the season and second on artificial turf. And he came up uh, with a great victory here tonight. And the team will go home 1-0 in the Gateway Conference. And they are 2-1 and one on the season. As Southwest Missouri State falls to 1-1-1. One, one and, one, and they are 1-1-1 one, one and one in the conference overall. So there's the next promo coming up for the game. As you can see, Murray State will be back here October 26th at 2 p.m. Central Time, live from Springfield, Missouri. And that should be an exciting telecast here on S. Well, now lost it. The Iowa State, Gus Davis Adolphus here. Last year's women's tennis team was 20 and 14. Drake women's volleyball next Friday at Saturday. Right, Bill. Invitation. Doing today? Okay. Roberts, Montana State, Wichita State, and Kansas State. Oh, oh, yeah. Tuesday, doing, September 17th, the first home match. Hi, how are you doing? Iowa State, 7.30. Guys, both get up, hold on to it.
Base cannonball down here. Their band plays it a lot. They know it pretty well. They play it up good too. 